Welcome to another session of Mobile Rolling. That's a very special guest. We're going north. We're going to Port Period, Phoenix Park, and we're going to catch up with the current president and a former president. A couple of big names from Port Perry and hoping to have a good chat with them. And yeah, the dynamic duo will have them on shortly after the break from Port Perry here, live at Phoenix Park. Well, we promised you some very special people from Port Perry. We have Greg Sims, the uh, current president of the, the track here. Greg? Jimmy, how are you, mate? Great to have you on Mobile Rolling. Uh, and, of course, a former president who's on many hats is Neville Thompson. And everyone knows Neville if you've been to Port Perry Trots. Good to have you on the show, Nev. Yeah, thanks, Jim. Thanks for inviting me. Great, yeah. great to be here. Yeah, exactly. Now, we'll start with you, Nev. I mean... You started off as a very young man mm. getting involved with the sport of harness racing on the committee. Yeah, I was uh, 17 at the time. Yeah. And, um, yeah, I used to um, sit at the front on a – I was what, my home, my mum and dad's home was straight across the um, – Just across the road. Straight, straight across the road. Anyway, um, I'd sit there and um, wait for different people to come along. There was an old bloke, Cliffy Dangerfield, his name was. Anyway, he had uh, always had a couple of horses, never had no one to help him. So I went across and give me a with his horses. He had the only one horse that ever done any good was Amazing Blue, but um, he never had much luck. But um, anyway, um, and then I, I come across the Normans. Uh, ironically, it was Barry Norman, not the Barry Norman from Adelaide that passed away. Yeah. Um, Barry Norman from um, Gladstone. Okay. And he's they had some nice horses in Talara and uh, Karana. Yeah. And old Herbie was a great driver. Anyway, I become good mates with his son Barry, and they take us everywhere. They come in, come in a period and pick us up, take me to Port Augusta and have some great trips with them. Anyway, but Barry, I was his best man, but um, old Herbie, if he threw back the fence, he'd still get out. Yeah. But with but Barry, he'd still be in there trying to get out. <laughs> and um, yeah, so he's, um, the, the start, Barry never got the, the capabilities of his dad yeah. in the end. But, um, but yeah, had some good times just there. Um, had another one, while well, I across the road one night, my dad and I thought he was half drunk, come out and um, he said, Come out the front here. I said, "What's wrong?" He said, "There's two elephants on the front lawn. The circus was on the, in town, yeah. and the circus used to be parked on the terrace. Yeah. And you just in a car park here. That's what the Twatton Club let them have the car park. Anyway, sure enough, there was two elephants there, right on the front on the front on the front lawn. It was only a bit of green they've probably seen for a while by, by the look of it. But yeah, it was quite quite an interesting time. Yeah. And um, you you actually weren't involved as a participant though, as far as driving and, and training or anything like that. It was just as a spectator, no, no, becoming no. involved in administration. No, that's right. I only ever drove. Um, I, I drove out Tomo's place. I drove a few just in oh, slow work. Um, Gabardi was probably the best one I drove. Yeah. He was a handy horse and went to Western Australia, I think. But anyway, um, then I was being on the committee. Um, it was a good um, Cyril Potts. He was a great man. He he's he's got a lot to be thankful thankful from over the years here. For he got people like um, there was top, the two Thompson brothers, and there was um, Kenny Don't Kenny Smith, and um, a couple of other ones. I just can't think of at the moment. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, they were. Um, he got this group together, and he, another one was funny, funny one was Phil Wilson. He came up from Adelaide. Thank okay. you. Anyway, he had this horse in, and um, he came up there, and he, Cyril had two jinkers, two horse floats, one with a one single, one double. Both had the same number played on. Mm -hmm. So Phil was the copper. <laughs> so he said, "I don't know what you're going to. Um, what, how are you going to get on with these two um, floats here, Cyril?" And Cyril said, "Well, he said next time you come in, he said just pull one of the blooming tailgates down." He said, "That's what I always do, he said, and that's what's going to stay locked. You want to keep the horses here." <laughs> so um, then we went. We had uh, with the bingo. We um, had a um, good. Uh, was uh, so I that, that committee meeting when, when I was about 20 to have a, a bingo, which um, Peter and Fitzy come in, become involved with with myself, and um, we, we we started a bingo, and that the bingo went for 35 years, yep. and uh, which we made good money to uh, do the facilities around the place, like the um, put money into the tower, our stewards tower, which you sit in, yep. and also um, into the track, we had money to put into the track as well, so it was. Um, it was really good to uh, be able to do that and help the club out along the way. Mm -hmm. um, in the about past, of another chat, another good memory was Bill Moroni. He was the president of the club years ago, and I and he it was a meeting in Adelaide. He said, "Come down with me to Adelaide." So I went down with him. 
Anyway, um, we went in there and he anyway, come out and he said, I've got to get something on North Terrace. I said, you're going to have fun getting the park here, Bill. Bill just pulled up, pulled up out the front, got out of his car, undone the bonnet, and he said, put the bonnet up. And he said, if the cops come along, just tell them that I was going to get help. Mechanical <laughs> trying to get help. Anyway, come back, in the car we go. Uh, back in the car we get. And, um, but um, he was a good old, good old um, farmer. Caught one night, at, one night at Bingo, there was a disagreement between uh, Bill and my father. No, over fisticuffs. Said, really? Back. But both were settled within a week, of course. You know, they both they both admitted they were wrong, mm. and uh, got on with the, got on with the show. But um, but yeah, we was uh, Bingo was real good, like Johnny T and his wife Glennis T, and that helped run it throughout right throughout the years, and um, and it was and it was um, a great time. But, and then we um, move along to the, uh, the the track. Well, the track was run, run by uh, Mick. Actually, took Mick Darling took control of the track yeah. because he was. Um, works walks former for the council which helped and uh, Ian McEwen come up here on a Sunday yeah. and checked the place out and had a good look around and he seen it and that he said um, and at the time he wasn't getting on with um, South Australian Harness Racing Club so um, he said get some plans to me so we got the plans out we got the plans down on the Monday morning first thing to him anyway um, and then Mick, well, so Mick just took control and um, organised the track and from there um, it just get the ball. And the track was done in four months. Yeah, he came here on the Monday in um, January, and it was finished on the 14th of August because it had to be finished for the um, Masters Games, which we had planned that year, which was a success, been a success over the last um, four or five, four or five years. Um, so this is the track that we see now that we've got in the background here, 950 metres in circumference. Yeah. Uh, You've had you've had track changes here, three different sizes yep. in your time. Yeah. Uh, originally, when the track, I, I, I've got to check my notes here, but it, it goes back to uh, 1954 when Correct. Phoenix Park opened. Yep. It was a 572 metre track, and then in 1985, you had the track upgraded to 805 metres. And the instance with Ian McEwen you're talking about was what the turn of the century yeah, year, was, year 2000, yeah, that's right. where we, we've had the 950 meters. And um, you've mentioned a lot of things there about uh, how the how the club survived, and a lot of that is with the support of uh, volunteers. And Greg, you as as president now, you, you've seen all that work that's been presented over the years, yep. and it's just something that you've got to flow on now. Yeah, that's right. Uh, we we rely on our volunteers. We have a tremendous group of volunteers that run the canteen for no cost and um, do a lot of work around the place. Yeah, without the volunteers, we'd be really struggling. Yeah. What about you as a role as president? I mean, you've got a harness racing background. How do you get involved in the trots? Um, 30 odd years ago, a bloke called Les Jones okay. um, had horses at Port Broughton and I, I always liked horses and I went in partnership with him. Uh, the horse and uh, we uh, wasn't, wasn't a hell of a lot very good but um, we, uh, then I just sort of started driving a few in job work and then in fast work and the lads come along and they were keen to two out of three were keen anyway and uh, yeah just snowballed from there sort of thing. Yeah and, and you've had your own family members that have continued on as well. Yeah Troy and Brad are both still in the harness racing. Um, we've had a few decent horses over the years. We've started off he was lucky enough to get one fairly early called Bravado Smoke. Yeah. And then uh, Christopher's first and uh, Little Red Riding Hood most recently. Um, she was the mother of Miss Piggy, which is now going to start. So, yeah, we've had a few reasonable ones. Okay. Now, what made you take on the role as president here at Port Perry? I just thought it was time to give something back to the club. The club was in a bit of a, a spot at the time that they needed a president and... Uh, um, we had a bit of turmoil on the committee and they needed a level head and I thought I'd fit the role and I'll, although it's been a challenge, we had to fill the hole that Neville left um, and Jackie Hall, um, both of them retired, so yeah, we've got a lot of new faces around but uh, yeah, it was a bit of a challenge, I'd retired from work so I thought it was time to give a bit back to the club. Okay, and you're steering the ship okay now, they're heading in the right direction? I believe it is, yeah. Yeah. Um, and what's what's the plans ahead? What what's what's in the bucket list for Port Perry Club, you think? What what what, what are you what are your aspirations for the club? Well our aspirations are to have regular racing. That's yep. that's what we need. And whether that's a Tuesday, Friday the first had those, but of course they're not up for grabs at the moment. But um, yeah just a regular racing so the trainers around here got a reason to get out of bed and train their horses yeah and
I mean, in your time, you've seen the dates change of racing all over the place. You know, you nearly raced here every single day of the week. It's changed that much, you know. So that, that's something that you really, you can't really tell where you're headed. I mean, is it makes it difficult to plan with that when, when you know they you might be racing on a Tuesday one time, the next minute on a Saturday, or is it, everything's just adaptable in your time? Yeah, I think in the it's it's just got to change. You yeah. know, it's in the past we wanted we like Friday nights, and, and in my opinion, and um, but things had to change, and you just had to get, go with it, or you know you were going to go nowhere. Yeah, and and same same thing for you, Greg. You you think just adapt with with what they throw at you, and say okay, look, we want to race, uh, and, and I suppose you got to work on the numbers of the trainers in the area to to make sure the. Well, race that's right. I mean, you're not going to please every trainer. Um, and a lot of them are happy with Tuesday nights, but we need to fit in with the board and look at the industry as overall and um, what's better for the industry. And I believe last Tuesday night, or last time we raced here, uh, the turn -up, betting turnover was really good. So. Yeah. And, and it, it's a history-making club because I, I looked at, uh, I was cleaning out my room the other day and I found a South Australia Greyhound leash, which said on Friday, February the 22nd, 1985, the Port Perry Club right here, right now, was the first ever greyhound and harness meeting with tab coverage under lights in Australia. So it's a history-making club. It's done that. Strathalban had had a tab meeting in daylight conditions with harness and greyhounds, yeah. but Port Perry is the first ever track in Australia under lights with tab coverage, and that goes back in 1985. That was your time there? I was actually off for a period in the mid-80s, but while I, while I was off, I actually run the Botra. Um, which when we were getting 40 and 50 horses at the trials. Yeah. So, um, you know, even though I wasn't on the committee, I was um, always with the Botra. But yeah, that's when this top bar, I believe, well, it wasn't, it was when this top bar was built up. Yeah. Similar time to that, but yeah. We, we had discussions about the, the, because if you can see in the background, all, the, all we've got now is the harness racing track, but inside of that was the Greyhound track. And where the harness racing track is now is where the thoroughbred racing track was. And it was a dirt track. And I, I, I remember calling the last ever meeting here. Uh, and look, I, Deb, we, we were at discussions about this, what year it was, but I believe it was on the 10th of September, 1998. And Jarmac won the cup, trained by Gary Kennewell. And the record shows that Richard Jolly was actually the jockey of that particular galloper here. And I remember calling the last ever meeting here. And I know you were in the office here mm -hmm. back in 1988, because I remember, 98, I should yeah. say, uh, when I, I saw you here. And you said, oh, Jimmy, you're finally calling the Gallops meeting. But that was only a once a year event, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. We, when we, when we went to Ryder a, a couple of years before, and Ryder, well, we were in the box seat because there were the racing greyhounds and um, harness racing. Anyway, um, the, the galloping code said that if we give our our, our galloping meeting, which we only had one a year, yep. and it was, um, and it belonged over to, um, uh, anyway, it was with the greyhounds here. But when, um, when um, they come and they, when they come along, it was, um, we had their support. We had, we had the racing support if we forgo our, um, we, we got forgo our gallop meeting. So we forwent that, and then we got, we had great, we had the harness and the gallops on our side, three, two against one, went to a meeting and. I did get a couple of um, not looking great, from a couple of far, farmers out one year. One was Leo Kane, who was a relation of mine. They weren't weren't happy at all because um, Wallace, they said you're in charge. You you give it away. Yeah, you, you, you give it away. It wasn't me to give it away, but <laughs> but, it, um, but it worked out. You know, worked out better in our favour that we were going to get the more meetings. So we went up to um, we went up to 20 meetings after Ian McHugh. And when I when I started in '97, yeah, we had we went on um, we had 12. Then it went up to 16. Then it went up to 20. Then when Port Augusta folded in the early, it went up to 20, 26, 27. Yeah. And then it gradually went the other way and went down. Hmm. But um, did you ever have a tricode meeting here? All three. We did. Well, where, where could you fit the gallopers and, and the harness horses? I suppose in the stable yeah, here it, it would be. Yeah, well, gallops. Uh, it was never except for the cut meeting. We tried on, on in gallop meetings here when we had two horses. We had walkovers, you know. Okay. You go in, there'd be, there'd be 12 horses to make a meeting up. Yep. You know, and that um, was, that, you know, that was that was very interesting, yeah. Now, Greg, in your time now, um, Memorial Oval, now they used to have electric bike racing of trots there. And, yep. and I look, I don't know what year it was that it started, but I, I did find that the first meeting of Port Perry Trotting Club 
on the 20th of October 1909 was held at the Port Perry race course. So that was somewhere elsewhere. I believe that was to it. About, um, Kuna Mile Way there. Okay. And then on the 21st of February 1922, the first meeting was at Memorial Oval. And yeah. I know that I read in Botcher one time in the 1930s, they had electric light racing at Memorial Oval. So that's now the new sporting prince precinct that they're doing there now? Yeah, that's the council have put a big uh, new grandstand in the Oval and sporting complex there. It looks magnificent. So hopefully they're going to get a couple of AFL uh, early matches. Yeah. And uh, yeah, no, it's really good. Yeah, for sure. All right, so you've spoken about some of the aspirations of the club. You just want to keep racing, racing, racing. What what would be the dream for you as far as like Nev spoke about the number of meetings that peaked here at Port Perry, around 26 it was. Yeah. Uh, what, what what would you like as president of the Port Perry Club now? Yeah, well, I reckon once a fortnight works really well for us. Yeah. Um, and we somewhere around that mark. Um, and we've got the up and coming combined dual race meeting with Mount Gambia. Yes. So that'll be another history making event because I believe it's the first time it's ever happened. So. Yeah, so that's in October, yep. uh, middle of October and late October. 13th it? of October. Yeah, yeah, 13th of October and then the 27th after that. Yep. So, uh, and so, so if people don't know, you're going to have possibly half the meeting here at Port Perry and the other half's going to be made up at, at Mount Gambia. Yeah, so yep. racing in as a flow on, as a, a virtual eight race program, I suppose. Yep. Yeah. Have they told you how many races you're going to get there? Will you get four? It here? depends on the horses. Yeah. Um, yeah. We're told we'll at least get four, but if the horse numbers warrant, we can have five or six. Yeah. Just depends what both codes got, what yeah. both venues have got. Yeah. What's the thing that you admire most of the Port Perry Club that made you want to become president? You, you said that you wanted to put back in because they've been so good to you as a participant. Oh, just the volunteers. Yeah. Uh, simple as that. Like. This club has been profitable in the past just on their volunteers alone. And everyone you speak to has always had a turn on the committee or what. Oh, I've been on the committee nine years now, so I thought it was time to step up and take on the big boys. It's infectious, isn't it? <laughs> we saw we saw it and took over Neb's life. Yeah. Neb, you, you spoke about Cyril Potts. I mean, he was instrumental in the Invitation Drivers Challenge, yeah, he wasn't he? He, he? he was the one that started, started up with Ginger Gleeson. Yep. Anyway, um, he bring up Ginger. And um, after, um, it's quite interesting, after two or three years have been going, people are ringing up and up. And half abusing me, you know, for how, not being how can, invited. How can I never get up? How can I never get up? You know, and once and once we let, once you we left left, left Lance out because we we thought we'd put some other people in, we had his brother and that, and he wasn't happy at all. Yeah, you know, but Lance was great. That Lance never really missed, but so but yeah, you know, they'd get the wild because they weren't getting asked. I know, I know what you're saying because I went to Mary Rose Trots one time and Johnny Cowdo came up to me. He said, he said, uh, Timmy. Why didn't they invite me back at Port Pirkey? <laughs> they loved it. They loved coming here, yeah. And, and look, you had some major names and drivers here. I mean, the late Gavin Lang was here on a regular basis, late midnight, you know, some of the, the real high-profile names. They just wanted to come here and be part of it. It's quite interesting when I went through the list there. Going through the centre, no, you know, Barry Purden was here one year. Yeah. We needed a mini was on at Globe Derby. Yeah. And one of the other main people on that night was Gay to pull a chino. Okay. Because she was like the leading lady. And she's or, back now, yeah. And I had laughed myself. I thought, oh, Gay is back, <laughs> back every week now. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, there's big history, Nev. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you've done a lot of work. Greg, you've got a lot of work to do. Uh, <laughs> yeah, like you said, you had big fields, uh, shoes to fill with Nev. Uh, yep. But uh, look, sounds like you're heading in the right direction. And yeah, just keep the keep the going for yeah, harness so, racing at Port Perry. Well, so you're certainly lucky to Mick right along the way. You know, we Mick were, Darling? We were together for 20-odd yeah. years. Yeah. And um, also, oh, Jenny, I better thank Jenny. <laughs> so your wife, yeah, she had something to do with it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but like, yeah. so I went, just 12 months ago, I went home from a trot me and I just went home and said, um, I said to Jenny, I said, I just I can't do this, I just don't feel like I want to do this anymore. Yeah. And so I thought, that's it. Yeah. You know. And the doctor did say to take it yeah, easy. But I did, um, at any time, Barry's one of the, Barry Koshal, one of the, one of the hand, he's always on the phone to me. So, you know, yeah. so only two willing to help him out whenever I can. Yeah. Yeah. You've got a lot of history there, Nam. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. I mean, you've yeah. seen it all, and now it's your turn to build up that history, Greg. Yeah. yeah. Well, there we go. There's the Port Perry Legends here at Phoenix Park, Port Perry Harness Racing. They rely on the volunteers. They do a lot of work, the volunteers, and they, they, they couldn't get by. But, Nev, you know, what, what's some of the main things you want to talk about? 
Oh no, I just wanted to mention about um, Dale Afford's another one. He's, he's around the place now. He was on the committee years ago, but if you asked Dale to do something today, he'd have it done before tomorrow. Yeah. You know, and um, and oh, people like Bob Orgie. On Lefty Matters was secretary manager for years, and Lefty's still going. Yeah. He's in a home um, up at Learholm, and he's he's up there, and um, he's still going along okay at 94. Yeah, and before that time, I mean, you see the name Lambert in the in the grandstand yeah, area. Yeah, um, yeah. There's a lot of people that put in a lot of hard work. So. Yeah, Joey. When we used to count the money from the bingo from the bar and take the bar money up to him, then we we borrowed tables and chairs from the Wisdom Footy Club for each week. We'd take that, then bring them. That's time I fit to you, me, and mm. take them back just to get us going. It wasn't long before we could buy our own, but um, <laughs> but yeah, it's been um, been good times. And more to come. Yep. All right. There we go. That, that's a wrap. There's the Port Perry Harness Racing Club. 950 metre circuit now. As we mentioned, there's been three different sizes here where we are right now at Phoenix Park. But 950, that's where it's staying.